Mechanium Keyboardius! That's some pretty bad CG. The keyboard world is full of many forces. There's a gigabyte keyboard named the Force K85, Topra keyboards named Real Force, and we even have a community member named Megaforce. With a name like Merlin, there is only one kind of force that matters, and that's the Magic Force 68. I got the opportunity to purchase this keyboard during Amazon's Prime Day sales. There are several versions of this keyboard available, but the one available for the sale was the most basic. It normally retails for around $40, but I got it at $31. This is a 68 key layout. You might have seen other keyboards similar to this, such as the FC660 by Leopold or the Vermillo VA68M. This is different, as unlike those two, this is cheaper and readily available on Amazon. So what do you get for 40 bucks? You get your typical cardboard box, the keyboard in a plastic bag, a key puller, and a USB mini B cable. In my opinion, these are probably the worst keycap pullers to use as they can potentially scratch your keys. If you ever upgrade to a nicer key set, I would recommend you use wire keycap pullers. I've linked a few down in the description below. It even comes with an instruction manual detailing keyboard specific functions. Not all these will be applicable to this model though. The Magic Force has a low profile floating key design. While many in the enthusiast community may dislike this look, I prefer it as it makes it a whole lot easier to clean your keyboard and remove keycaps. Initial impression and feel is that this is a very sturdy keyboard. I don't feel any abnormal flex and typing on it feels great. I'm not the first to say this, but if you search online, you'll find many others saying the same thing. The keycap legends don't have a very gamerish font and they're thick ABS. They look pretty similar to the caps that come on pokers. Unfortunately, the legends seem to be pad printed. This means that the legends will eventually wear off much faster than most. You might even be able to scratch it off if you're not careful. You'll also notice that it has a standard bottom row, minus one key of course. You'll be able to put a majority of available keycaps on this with no problem at all. I really dislike keyboards that have their logo on this particular part of the keyboard. But with the silver top plate and the silver logo, it's almost as if it's camouflaged. I still hate it, but your taste may vary. And I promise I won't judge you. The stabilizers are cherry style, and like most OEM and readily available keyboards, they rattle a lot. Chinese-made stabilizers have larger holes and thinner wires which contribute to the rattling. I highly recommend that you get some dielectric grease and put a small amount to soften this rattling. Turning the keyboard around, you'll see that the mini USB B port is tucked away in a unique location. Unfortunately, it looks that the port is a bit crooked. It doesn't affect functionality in any way and I'm still able to plug and unplug my cable. The keyboard, however, only allows the cable to be routed out on one channel. There are also two feet on the back, which are really hard to pull out. And I had to pry it out with my fingernails just to get it to budge. However, the included keycap puller helps a great deal. Removing the keycaps, you'll notice that these switches are Otemu Browns. These require a little more force to operate and are cheaper than their Cherry counterparts. You may remember the Drivo grammar that I reviewed a while back. I had issues using SA keycaps on a few of the browns and there's a possibility that this may happen on this keyboard too. I haven't experienced it though. For more info on Otemu browns, I suggest looking up Input Club's analysis on them. Opening up the keyboard requires removing screws on the back of the keyboard. I do see globs of extra solder here and there, but for 40 bucks, it's not bad. This doesn't affect functionality in any way. You'll notice that the USB port is actually on a different PCB. This is uncommon on budget keyboards like this and is a very good design choice. The USB port is a very common point of failure and this allows for easy repair and replacement. However, I've never heard of anyone successfully getting a PCB 
from Magic Force. Besides, at this price point, buying another one will probably be more cost effective. As I mentioned at the start of the review, this keyboard comes in several flavors. Some have a dip switch in the back that allows you to swap left control and caps lock, disable Windows keys, and swap Windows and FN keys. Some have LED in switch lighting, and some have switch options such as Gatoron and Cherry. But of course, these come at a much higher price point. Some things to keep in mind are that only backlit versions of this keyboard have the dip switch. And if you do get the backlit version, you also get lower quality keycaps with gaming legends. Yes, that's even lower quality than pad printed. Even then, the price still doesn't come close to keyboards such as the FC660M or the VA68M. This would still be a good buy if you're on a budget. Overall, this is a great keyboard to have. If you're looking for a small compact keyboard but can't live without navigational keys, I highly recommend this. And it's great for a first time buyer. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button. This is Mech Merlin, and I'll see you all again next time.